Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I am Dr. Mohsen Raj. I am a DM cardiology student at Ames New Delhi. Back in 2017, uh, in July session, I had All India Rank 16 in Ames PG. I had All India Rank 11 in PGI Chandigarh exam. I did my MD from Ames and now I am doing DM in cardiology at Ames. Now this video is targeted for INICT November 22 session. So we know that AIMS has given its uh, notification that the exam will be conducted on 13th of November, which cues you exactly two months of time, right? So what is the target audience for today's video? Okay, so there are threefold. Number one are the students who are currently doing internship, who, who are expected to finish their internship in December, by the end of December, so that they'll be able to join um, the uh, DMD from the next session, from the January session, right? The second are people who have already completed internship, they have qualified need PG, they're somehow waiting for the counseling. We all know about the delays and the need PG counseling that are there. And the third set of students are there are the, are the ones who are actually preparing for the next year NEET PG or next year INICT. So this video will be helpful to all the three because no matter where you are, you may be an intern or you may be uh, you may have qualified um, NEET PG. And, and by the way, if, if you have qualified NEET PG and are awaiting counseling, awaiting to get your your college, I suggest. There are two months, golden two months. You can read again. You just have to revise things. You just have to brush up the things again. And you can take this chance of appearing in INICT. Your two months of hard work may eventually land you up in a central institute like Ames or like PGI Chandigarh. And about interns who are busy in their duties, they still, uh, you know, I'm going to share some strategies for those uh, students as well. Now, I'll divide these two months into two parts, the first one and a half month part and the last 15 days part, because I suggest that in the first one and a half month, the first 45 days, you do a fast integrate reading of the subjects. By integrate, I mean, you start the subject from chapter number one, you end the subject at the chapter number and the last chapter. And of course, I don't, I don't mean you read that book cover to cover. Of course, you'll be targeting the high yield stuff, but an integrated revision, you'll be spending three, four days in reading pathology, for example, three, four days in reading microbiology, for example. So that's integrated reading, quick reading. You cannot spend 15 days in a subject because there is total 45 days here. And then the last 15 days is about the final revision. Whatever you read in these one and a half months, you read it again in the final 15 days, right? So I highlight here that revision is the key. Yes, without revisions, I guarantee you will get a lot of easy questions wrong. And with the revisions, you will minimize the mistakes. Revisions are the key in INICD or for that matter, any actually, actually any exam. So what is the strategy that I suggest? You have to understand that you can't read basic textbooks now. You have to understand you can't read 100% of any subject now. So you need to know what is high yield. Now, for example, INICT is known to give you more questions from basic sciences, from first and second prof subjects. So it will be wise to read those subjects in a little bit more detail. And it's also known that subjects like anesthesia, subjects like orthopedics or subjects like ENT or ophthalmology, they, they do appear in the exam, but maybe three questions or four questions and one or, or one or two maybe repeaters and something like that. You don't want to spend a lot of time in, in such type of subjects. So what I suggest for the first and second prop, if you have made your notes, either by yourself, by self-studies, or when you were attending your coaching, be that online or offline, whatever form, revise those. If you have read from a review book, for example, you've read the Gobin uh, Garg book in pharmacology, or you've read maybe Vivek Jain book in preventive social medicine. If you've read those books previously, revise them quickly. At least the theory part that is written before the MCQ discussion of that book, right? I highlight throughout this presentation that previous year questions are the most important stuff you can, you know, read right now. So you need to see five to 10 year of question papers that AIMS has asked in its exam. 
the previous NICT papers, the previous papers of AIMS PG, 5 to 10 years, all questions from pathology, all questions from pharmacology, all questions from all 19 subjects, you should memorize. And not just those questions, but also the topics surrounding that question. For example, they frequently ask question on neonatal resuscitation, for example. And on one exam, they might have asked questions on the number of times you have to compress the chest. Well, I suggest you read neonatal resuscitation in full detail because they've asked a question from that area once, they're likely to repeat a question from that area. If they ask you a question, for example, from the chapter of the cell, cell injury, they ask questions on apoptosis or necrosis, read that area in a little bit more detail. If they ask you a question on anti-cancer drugs, if, if they ask you questions on checkpoint in their, their, their you know, high yield and names exams, read that stuff in a little bit more detail, right? So previous questions, 5 to 10 years and the topics surrounding those previous questions. Okay, then what about clinical subjects? You cannot read general medicine in detail. You cannot read surgery in detail. Okay, so such subjects, if you have prepared notes during your coaching, during your online or offline coaching, good, you can revise that. I even warn you not to read the individual review books right now for medicine and surgery because that will be too time consuming. It will take you seven days to finish medicine if you do that way. So best previous year questions, 10 year previous year questions, and the topics surrounding. See, if you ask me, what is the highest yield stuff that's going to be asked in the exam? I tell you that you go and check previous year questions, previous five year questions, you will get to know the topics that are favorite of the examiners. Okay, so the papers are said by AIMS professors, the faculty over here, they have their favorite areas and they're likely to test you again on, the, on those areas. The difference is they may not repeat the question straight away, you don't expect such straight repeats in the exam, even though there are a few questions that are straight repeats. But most of the times they will tweak the questions, but they will be from the same topic. They'll be almost from the same concept, but in a slightly different and slightly modified form. So read previous year questions from medicine, from surgery, from obstetrics, from pediatrics. Read the previous year questions in detail, plus the explanation of those questions, plus the area surrounding that topic. Okay. Then what about, I also suggest here preventive and social medicine, the community medicine is a high yield subject in AIMS entrance. So read that in a little bit more detail, preferably if you've read that Vivek Jain book once, read it once again, the theory part, you don't have to do each and every question from that book again, okay? And don't worry about the thickness of that book. It may be a little bit bulky book, but it has so much of repetitions. Even if you read the theory part, the, the, the portion that is given just before the MCQ part, that's more than enough of revision, okay? And PSM, I highlight again and again, because you will be able to revise microbiology from that, you will be able to get at least 15 questions from that particular subject, right? Then what about short subjects? Previous questions would be more than enough right now. Dermatology, you may open Nina Khanna's book and just remember, memorize the image given in that book because they're directly taken from that book most of the times. Same is, apply, same is true for, for pathology. Look at the image from Robbins. You don't have to read Robbins, just the image from Robbins. You don't have to revi revise Genong right now, but the image from Genong because those images are likely to appear in the exam, right? And they used to be straight copy paste from these books into the actual exam. What about psychiatry? Notes, forensic notes, previous questions, you don't need to read their books. Radiology, you don't need to read individual books. See, at the maximum, you may expect five or six questions from radiology. And in most of the such questions, you will be able to answer those questions from your knowledge of pathology, from your knowledge of medicine. You have read the signs of particular diseases in their in medicine actually or in pediatrics actually radiology is then a summary of all the, all of that you don't have to read radiology as separately as a subject but doing previous year questions would be actually high yield so i highlight the role of previous year questions once again and you need to have timelines i told you the bigger, the more important subjects like second year subjects of pathology, pharmacology or physiology, very important subject or obstetrics, very, very important subject asked by AIMS exam. Such subjects, you can spend four to five days in the integrated revision. Four days, start your pathology notes from start to end. The previous questions from start to end, you just got four to five days for that subject.
And this is true for physio or anat or obstetrics or medicine. So you just got four to five days. And for a shorter subject, derma, forensic, you just got a day, one day. You decide, do you want to read your notes or you want to read your notes plus previous year questions. Okay. And subjects like anesthesia, ortho, ENT, optala, I've told you previous year questions should be more than enough in these last two months. And what about last 15 days? Nothing new. Whatever you read in the coming 1.5 months, read it again in the 15 last days, last 15 days, which means if you follow such a strategy in, in these two months, you'll be able to do the subjects, all subjects, your syllabus, the most important things at least twice. And if you do that, I'm sure that you will be able to answer a good number of questions in the exam and I'm sure you'll be able to get a rank in INICET. So, so what I highlight in this in this in this video is the role of previous year questions. I have been a topper in such exams and I uh, trust me, I have relied the most on previous year questions because they not only tell you the hot areas, but they also tell you the questions that are more likely to be repeated. OK, second, the revisions. If you don't revise a topic in these two months, you are unlikely to answer a question from that topic correctly or you are more likely to make a mistake in an easy question from that topic. Remember, in, I, in an INICT paper, you will have questions that are very hard. Some questions like maybe 20 odd questions that are very hard. You may not be able to answer those questions even if you read that subject for 30 more days. No, but you should not be able, you should not get an easy question wrong in that paper. Difficult questions, those 20 questions are difficult for everyone. But what about those questions which are moderate in difficulty and which you can solve provided you revise that subject, you revise that topic twice in these two months, okay? And towards the end, maybe in the last couple of days, you should keep a separate list of volatile topics, maybe the enzymes of the biochemistry, maybe the IPC codes of forensic medicine, maybe some named fractures of orthopedics, or maybe some something from psychiatry or something from a particular subject that you're particularly weak in, those volatile things you can read on the last couple of days. And this will take about 12 to 14 hours a day. 12 to 14 hours a day of reading and in three hour sessions. Forget the Pomodoro technique. You need to sit in the exam for three continuous hours and maintain your focus for three long hours. So practice that right now in these in these last two months. Read in three hour sessions. You may take a one hour break afterwards, but read for 12 to 14 hours a day. This is surely going to reward you. You will surely land in a central institute. And yes, it makes a difference if you do your MD or MS from a central institute. I wish you luck. I wish whosoever uh, the subscribers new or the old ones, whosoever is watching this video, I wish you luck in the upcoming exam. And a special request for people who have qualified need PG, are awaiting counseling. Okay, you can continue the counseling process, but at the same time, do make sure that you read and revise things again, and do make sure you appear in the exam, I and ICT, and maybe you land up in a central institute and you altogether leave that need PG counseling story. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video.